Hi everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Dinosaur 10. I'm your host, John. Here we count down 10 facts you may or may not know about your favorite dinosaurs. Are you a diehard dinosaur fan? Did you just discover dinosaurs yourself? Either way, this is the show for you. Step back into the Cretaceous period, 75 million years ago, and stand in what would later become Alberta, Canada. You may just run into a herd of one of the loudest and most easily recognizable dinosaurs ever to exist. Today's dinosaur is Parasaurolophus. The model in front of you is the Schleich figure of Parasaurolophus. Let's start the countdown and learn more about this amazing dinosaur. Number 10. The name Parasaurolophus means near-crested lizard. It obviously got this name because of the large crest on its head. However, the name also means near Sauralophus, in reference to another dinosaur that has a similar, but shorter crest on its head. While both of these dinosaurs have very similar names, they are actually different dinosaurs, and should not be confused with one another. Number 9. Parasaurolophus was discovered in 1920 in Alberta, Canada, and later described in 1922 by a paleontologist named William Parks. Remains of Parasaurolophus have been found in the Dinosaur Park formation along with the remains of several other dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals. Parasaurolophus was one of the rarer dinosaurs found in Dinosaur Park formation, so it is possible that the ones found in the formation likely died while migrating to another part of the continent. Since then, the remains of Parasaurolophus have been found elsewhere in North America such as Utah and New Mexico. Number 8. There were actually three species of the genus Parasaurolophus in North America, Parasaurolophus walkeri, Parasaurolophus cyatocrystatus, and Parasaurolophus tubicin. Parasaurolophus walkeri was the first to be discovered in the dinosaur park formation in Alberta, Canada. Parasaurolophus cyatocrystatus was discovered in the southwestern United States and was the smallest Parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus tubicin was discovered in New Mexico and is the largest Parasaurolophus, though this claim would be challenged later. Number 7. There may be a fourth and larger species of Parasaurolophus. In 2000, a dinosaur closely resembling Parasaurolophus was found along the Amur River that forms a border between Russia and China. This dinosaur was later named Tyrannosaurus in honor of the Greek ferryman who ferried the dead to the underworld. Parasaurolophus and Tyrannosaurus are near identical, but Tyrannosaurus is larger. It has been estimated to be around 33 feet long and weighing about 4 to 5 tons, while Parasaurolophus walkeri and tubicin are estimated to be around 30 feet long and weighing about 2 to 3 tons. These two dinosaurs are so similar that there has been debate about whether Tyrannosaurus should have its own genus and be named Tyrannosaurus gininensis or if it should be a species under the genus Parasaurolophus and be named Parasaurolophus gininensis. Number 6. Parasaurolophus is part of the family Hadrosauridae. These are the famous duckbill dinosaurs. Like the name implies, the family's identifying feature is the duck-like bill on its head. Hadrosaurs were all herbivores, meaning they ate plants. One of their main evolutionary advantages was the way that they eat their food. They chomp down on leaves and branches with their bill and tear them off. Then, hundreds of teeth in the back of their mouth grind the food before they swallow it. Number 5. Parasaurolophus walked on both forelegs and two legs. Most likely, it spent most of its time walking on all fours. The ability to rear up and walk on its stronger hind legs had its advantages. This allowed Parasaurolophus to reach food high up in the trees that would otherwise be unreachable. More importantly, it could run faster on two legs than on four. Parasaurolophus did not have horns in its head, spikes on its tail, or sharp teeth or claws to defend itself with. Its best defense was to run away as fast as it could, and being able to run away on two legs definitely helped. Number 4. Parasaurolophus lived its whole life on land. There has been debate about whether Parasaurolophus lived its whole life on land or if it spent a significant amount of time in the water. While there is no doubt that Parasaurolophus ate plants that grew in the water at times and could most likely swim, fossil evidence showed that it was not capable of fully living in the water. 
Number 3. Paris Rolophus was not born with the long crest that it's so famous for. In 2009, a high school student on a dig in Utah discovered a skeleton of a young Paris Rolophus, later named Joe the Dinosaur. Joe was very important in the study of Paris Rolophus because the skeleton helped give paleontologists an idea of how Paris Rolophus grew up. When it was born, a baby Paris Rolophus crest would be nothing more than a small stump on the top of its head. As it grew up, the crest grew with it, and would eventually reach nearly six feet in length by adulthood. Number 2. Paris Rolophus did not use its crest to breathe underwater or to fight. Some paleontologists first thought that Paris Rolophus may have spent a significant amount of time underwater. This later proved to not be true, mainly because the crest did not have an opening at the end to be used as a snorkel, and that there was no way the crest could store enough air to sustain an animal of that size. Some paleontologists also thought that the crest could be used as a weapon. This was also most likely not true because the crest would not be able to withstand the stress of a fight. Number 1. Paris Rolophus used its crest for mating calls to communicate with its herd and regulate its temperature. Some paleontologists built a model of the Paris Rolophus crest based on fossil records and tested it with a virtual blast of air. The result was a loud resonating sound that could likely be heard for miles around. These bellows could be useful during mating season when male Paris Rolophus would try to get the attention of females in its herd. Also, different crest sizes would change the sound that the animal produces, giving each Paris Rolophus its own voice. This means Paris Rolophus may have been able to differentiate between members of its herd based on their voices. Adults would have deeper, louder calls, while babies would have more high-pitched voices. Lastly, because the crest had a large surface area and blood vessels, it may have helped Paris Rolophus keep cool in the heat. Well, that ends the countdown for Paris Rolophus. I hope you've enjoyed today's countdown. Did you learn anything new about Paris Rolophus? Do you know any other theories about how it used its crest? What dinosaur would you like to see featured on Dinosaur 10? Check the description for a link to Joe the Dinosaur's website. Also check out Paris Rolophus and other dinosaur figures on Schleich's website. Leave your comments in the comments section below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll be back for the next episode of Dinosaur 10.